well, it's quite a blustery afternoon. And I'm hoping that whilst I work in the polytunnel, that I'm gonna get a little bit of breeze. There's quite a lot to do in here. Let me just roll this up, which I've been keeping some of the cats out of the polytunnel with. And well, the polytunnel, I sort of classify it as over. The only thing in here that I'm really gonna perpetuate now is the carrots and I'll show you those a bit later. But the tomatoes, to be honest with you, I've stopped watering them. Water's pretty precious at the moment. And I'm thinking, no, I don't really want to grow any further tomato growth. And what I have got is quite a lot of ripe tomatoes, which I'm gonna to pick today and then start the process of removing them. And I've noticed a few people have been removing their tomatoes on YouTube and I can completely understand why. So let me take you around and I'll show you what we've got. Well, to be perfectly frank, it's not pretty. So we've basically got straggly tomato plants. They're still reasonably green and they're also laden with tomatoes, which I'm going to pick today. Even the house tomatoes, they've been quite big this year. I've had a lot of smaller ones in previous years, but they've not been quite as prolific. My basil, well, absolutely over now. So that's coming out. And the latar that have been in the ground, you can see there's just loads of tomatoes on the ground. They're all very small now. And a lot of them have had a bit of a munch from pests. I've got quite a lot of cucumbers in there, which to be honest are coming out now. We've had all the cucumber that we're going to eat and these are starting to turn yellow Let's see there's one or two reasonable ones in there and i'll probably pick them and give them away these super sweet tomatoes still laden you know there's loads and loads of tomatoes on here but they're starting to fall now and it's a fine line between allowing them to stay on the plant and falling and becoming unusable and well, just harvesting them. And if we have to make a massive batch of a to roasted tomato soup or something like that, then so be it. The ones that are struggling to ripen are these few remaining romas. There's quite a lot of them. And I notice one or two are starting to get diseased. There's one there. So again, I think what I'm gonna do is pull them and see if I can allow them to ripen on the windowsill in the house and we've had a lot off of those and again with these latar exactly the same just an awful lot of tomatoes on them but not really wanting to promote any further growth on them and that would be a big clear out in here and i'll do it step by step and then into my carrot bed which has got some beautiful carrots developing I don't know if you can see that one they're splitting. I notice that's got a big split in it, but it doesn't matter. They're for eating, not for showing. And if I just hook back, there's a couple there together. But even so, nice carrot inside. And a big one here as well, with lots of branches off of it by the looks of it. But keep those going for a bit longer. You can see there's plenty of fresh growth on there, nice and lush and I'll keep watering that. It's probably the only thing I am gonna water from now on. Maybe I've got a rosemary and maybe a mint, although that seems to be, that's flowered and is dying right back now. So this is not a particularly pleasurable job and it takes quite a bit of time, but it's the next stage in the polytunnel and it's gotta be done. Stop for a minute, just show you all these very small worms that we've got under these trays that I've had here. They've obviously bred well in the compost that I put in the pots and gone underneath for shelter and a bit of cool, keep it damp. But pretty much the trays that I've lifted have got that underneath and under that one, a few louse. So I need to watch out for that. Right getting through. It's a slow job, but worthwhile. Mm. 
I think with the volume of tomatoes I've got on these romas, what I'm going to do is just keep them going for a bit longer. And it is a risk. You end up getting a lot of this sort of dusty fungus on them, which is why I try and get the tomatoes out earlier rather than later. But if there is some decent fruit on here, which there is, it may pay me just to hang on a short while or a little bit longer. So I think I'm going to do that. Just clip off the stuff that I can see is really dying back and see if I can focus some of the attention into those continuing to ripen tomatoes. So this one's on a spur that's rotted in places, but it's still ripening. So I'm just going to clean them up and see if I can keep them going for just a little bit longer. I need to give them a bit of a water, but I'll bring those three romas up this end, I think. Right, cucumber time now. And it'll be interesting to see just how many cucumbers there are in this foliage, because invariably it always surprises me. There we are, that stick out. Right, it's sort of running away now. And some of these cucumbers are turning a wee bit yellow on the ends. So they're not that useful anymore. Right, let's get all the foliage over here. That's a tomato. There's another one. And another one. I find some of these really tiny ones are some of the best. Right, there's a really small one there. And another one. And another one. And I'm absolutely convinced that you only need to grow one cucumber plant in our house because why well, we just don't eat too much of it. There's another two. I think that's got all those off. Right, I'll clear this foliage. I'll carry on through there. I'll show you what I've got in the end. now and as I say we don't eat many cucumbers and this is what happens if you just leave them they turn yellow that one's starting to go so it's gonna be a lot of people in my street who are going to be receiving cucumbers in the next hour or two I think we might manage one or maybe even two but hey two cucumber bushes ample for a family of four and for two people, probably only one. Oh, that's been pretty hot work in here today. Probably not the ideal day to strip out your body channel the sun being as strong as it is but I just felt like it needed doing it was a real mess and it was bugging me and well we'll turn this now into some more pasta sauces or soups we fancied doing a recipe that's in a, a slow cooker we've given a load to a friend and they said they did theirs in a slow cooker and it looked fabulous so I don't know a recipe but look it up on the internet I think some garlic and some basil bits and bobs, but all that into a slow cooker, make a mighty fine pasta soup or sauce. And then these, well, they've got two chances. I know a lot of people do green tomato chutney, not something that we're particularly fond of, but a lot of those will ripen up. So I'll lay those out in a space where I think they might have a chance and who knows, one or two of them might ripen nice and quickly, like that one. Okay, well, the reality is that's only half a job. So I've got to move all this down into the lower part of the allotment. 
and just recover this bed a bit. And I think I'll probably get the basil down onto the compost heap. So quite a lot of effort yet, but it's a good job. I'll show you when I'm done. There we are. That is a huge part of the seasonal clear up. And as you know, I don't use my polytunnel in the winter for growing. So I'll be sorting out all my pots and various things in here in due course, but it's great to get it cleaned up and clear and feel like, well, it feels like the start of something new, which is always great on the allotment. I'll give these a bit of a water before I finish. But other than taking my crops home, that's me done on the allotment for today. I do hope you've enjoyed today's episode. It's been a bit of a tomato polytunnel special, but if you did, then why not like and subscribe? And if you want my updates every Wednesday and every Sunday at 8 p.m., click on the bell. Dio